Today, I will show you how we can build an e-commerce website in React with backend in GraphQL, or rather a base for an e-commerce website, because there's a lot of things that need to be implemented when building a e-commerce website. But the main message from this video is to show you how easy it is these days to build an e-commerce solution. I want this video to be very short. And at the end of it, after, I suppose, 15, maybe 20 minutes, we will have something working. So we will be using React.js on the front end and GraphQL on the back end. And the trick here is that on the back end, our GraphQL API, we won't be creating it from scratch, trying to figure out all the details that are needed to create an e-commerce solution. Instead, we will be using this project called Sailor, which is an open source GraphQL API for building production grade e-commerce solutions. And when I first discovered this project, I was, well, blown away, to be honest, how easy it is to build um, something on top of that. They have a GraphQL API built around for the e-commerce context. And you can build, you know, different UIs or other things on top of that when you are building your, your shop, your e-commerce platform. And the great thing about that is that they have, as I said at the beginning, they figured everything out. So they have all those notions you would require to build a, an e-commerce platform and they, you can just use them instead of trying to do it on your own. So the, you have the backend. You can just get this project. It's written in Python, in Django, and you can deploy it. And then you will have your API and then you can build a website, for example, in React, as in this video, or you know, a mobile app in Flutter, for example, or React Native, to provide this uh, e-commerce storefront. Yeah, so let's see that in practice. So when you go to uh, demo sailor IO, you will have this um, an example of a shop. You know, it's a, it's a dummy shop, and I think it's written in Next.js. So we will be using Next.js as well in this tutorial. You can browse uh, different products. You can add them to your um, basket, to your cart. You can do the checkout. And that's an example of integration. And everything is powered by GraphQL. So they have this, and they also provide this uh, dummy GraphQL endpoint for you. So you can just, you know, use it. So let's say if I want to get some products, um, I can run this query. And let's say I want to just first 10. And I'm getting some products. So that's everything we need basically to build the uh, a storefront, an integration, a website in React on top of this API. So in this first video, I want to show you how we can just display the products. And then if you're interested, we can, with each video, we can add more uh, e-commerce features, like a cart, checkout, uh, and all other sort of things. So let's start simple. Let's try to display the product first as a, as a base for this e-commerce solution. So I will be using Next.js for that. And um, so let's just copy this line and and let's call it Sailor e-commerce Next.js. And let's open that in VS Code. And I will start the, the server. So we have this, you know, the starting screen of Next.js and we can start adjusting it. So the first thing we would need is to integrate with this GraphQL endpoint that's available 
over here. So we will be using the Apollo client. I, I think you already know that I'm not a fan of Apollo, but that's uh, the simplest library here. Maybe in the future I will change it. But uh, the good thing for Apollo is that they have a lot of integrations and we'll be using some of that. So it's easier with Apollo. So let's add Apollo client. And now we will use the app and we will just wrap everything with our Apollo provider. So we need Apollo provider and our application that needs to be wrapped inside and Apollo provider from Apollo client. And here we need the client, so we haven't created it yet. Let's import Apollo client here and let's say that it's a new Apollo client. So now we have URI, which is this URL I showed you at the beginning. And then we need to also specify the cache, which will be in memory cache, something of that sort. So that should work. To make it uh, pretty, let's use Tailwind CSS. So I will just refresh my memory how we can install Tailwind with Next, but I need to use Yarn. And then we need to run this. So now let's just import Tailwind CSS, Tailwind CSS, and let's remove that. And let's start our app to see if it's working. Can't resolve GraphQL, okay. Let's install it. Okay, it seems it's working. Let's just check. I think we need to specify the porch option for Tailwind. So the, the JIT is working as expected, like that. That should be it. I think that's all for Tailwind. And now we could try to run a query, a GraphQL query. But in order to do that, we will use this code generation feature. So there is this project called GraphQL Code Generator, and it gets a schema, a GraphQL schema, and transforms that into on TypeScript types. So our schema is this endpoint provides a schema. So if you go here on the right and you clicked on schema, you will see all the types, GraphQL types that you can access. And there is a lot of them because Sailor is about creating an e-commerce solution. So, you know, there's a lot of things that can be used. And we want to have those types inside our TypeScript app. So we will use this GraphQL code generator to transform this endpoint, a file, a TypeScript file with types. So first of all, let's install uh, this uh, code gen CLI. But before we do, it's still this is still an XJS using JavaScript. So in order to use TypeScript, we need to just create TS config. And now if we run, it will see that we not want to use TypeScript. We need to add some dependencies. And now we detected TypeScript. Next.js is smart enough to pre-configure this with proper uh, settings. So now we have a TypeScript file and we can, for example, rename here to use TS6. Run it again. It should work as before. Yeah, it's working. So now we have a TypeScript app and we can add this code gen. So it can transform this endpoint, this remote endpoint, into a file that contains all the types 
as TypeScript type, uh, TypeScript types. So we need uh, GraphQL code gen CLI and then a few plugins. So TypeScript, TypeScript operations, and because we are using Apollo, TypeScript React Apollo. And this should be dev dependencies. Okay, so once we have this, we need to create a code gen YAML file. So let's create a code gen YAML file and I will just paste some content here and let's quickly go over it. So the schema is, point, is located at this URL. So that's the same URL we have here in this playground, the one that we can use to do the queries. And then we say that our, our queries, GraphQL query, queries, will be located in the components directory. So along with our React components. And then we want to generate the types in this file and the directory generated using those plugins we installed. And then we also have want to have this schema as JSON generated uh, in this file in the root directory. So now let's create components and let's maybe create a product list component. So this will be a function, a product list, and we will return just products for now. And inside our index, let's maybe remove all that and let's import. Let's import that. So import product list from product list. If I run, we have this simple message products displayed. So let's try to display this uh, list of products. So what we need to do is that we need a query. So let's say latest products. And this will be a GraphQL query. And this is just a string, but because I'm using this comment, it will be recognized as GraphQL. So we will have the syntax highlighting inside. Uh, let's go back to the playground and let's copy this like that. I wonder, maybe we'll take a description as well and image or rather thumbnail URL. So we will get, you know, the URL for each uh, product. Let's copy that and let's paste it here as our query. So now we just need to generate this uh, schema, those types from this uh, schema. So let's go to package JSON and let's add this new script generate that will run the GraphQL code gen, the one we installed, pointing to the code gen we created. And let's see what happens. So now if I run generate, it generated those types, as you can see, this file is pretty large. But at the end, at the end of it, we should have this uh, query we defined, but it's as a named query, which is not good. So if I just name it, and let's call it latest products, like that, and let's regenerate. Okay. So now if I go back, yeah, so we are here and as you can see, now we have a name and we have a hook, use latest products query, which means that here in our component, we can say data loading error, use latest products query, as simple as that. And then we can say if loading, we will return loading message. If error, for now we will just say error, maybe, maybe let's give a message. And if we have data, we will return it. We will say latest products, and this will be data products edges or empty. 
and here let's remove that and let's say you let's do a list le mm, in fact we need latest products map product like that and for now let's just say product well, it's <laughs> product title and now it's name like that mm, but the problem is that we have node here so what we can do is that we can say node title uh, so, sorry name and we can display the name like that and then we have to close this yeah that should be good let's see a refresh and voila we have the list of names of the products that are being fetched from this uh, remote rent endpoint so let's try to maybe display let's say that this could be h2 and let's display the image so that would be source and thumbnail url i believe and thumbnail here and we have it we have a list of products it's pretty cool huh and it was very easy to integrate uh, so now let's maybe just add some uh, <laughs> css classes so let's do a grid uh, grid calls maybe four a gap four okay and let me just paste some block so it's nicer and we need the category but we don't fetch that so let's see description yeah it works we have the a base for our e-commerce solution so let's just improve it a little bit quickly visually i mean using tailwind css so we could go back to pages index and here we could say uh, min h screen and maybe bg uh, gray 100 and that in that case uh, here we could say white yeah mm. what else maybe we could say main and let's say a max with uh, let's say seven and i think we need to do auto i'm not an expert in tailwind yet but it looks good a header would be nice so let's do diff which could be um white with a shadow and inside we will do will that work it's kind of working i wonder if i do class class name something like that will it work yeah it's better so flex and justify justify center no i'm not sure space x8 no maybe here yeah i don't want to spend too much time on doing tailwind in this video uh, i don't know how to center this <laughs> this here we will see it later but as you can see we have some sort of little shop with no cart and uh, no search any of that sort but we have the api that can provide us with this so i will stop it here if you're interested if you would like me to create a real e-commerce solution using sailor and react and maybe next.js let me know in the comments yeah it was very straightforward very easy and uh, thanks for watching see you in the next one